Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to see about cholesteatoma. This is a concise presentation for medical students. The word cholesteatoma is a misnomer because it neither contains cholesterol crystals as indicated by the term cholesteate nor is it a tumor as indicated by the term oma. Cholesteatoma is an abnormal skin growth in the middle ear behind the eardrum. Cholesteatoma consists of two parts matrix containing keratinizing squamous epithelium and a central white mass made up of keratin debris. There are various theories of origin for a cholesteatoma. Presence of congenital cell dress, invagination of tympanic membrane from the attic or posterior superior part of past tensa in the form of retraction pockets can cause cholesteatoma. This theory is known as Wittmax theory. Cholesteatoma can also arise due to basal cell hyperplasia. This is known as Reedy's theory. Epithelial invasion can also lead to cholesteatoma. This is known as Haberman's theory. Cholesteatoma can also arise due to metaplasia. This is known as Sade's theory. Cholesteatoma can be classified into congenital cholesteatoma and acquired cholesteatoma. Acquired cholesteatoma can be further classified into primary acquired and secondary acquired. Congenital cholesteatoma. It arises from embryonic epidermal cell dress in the middle ear cleft or temporal bone. The various sites for congenital cholesteatoma include middle ear, petrous suffix and cerebellopontane angle. Symptoms include conductive hearing loss and ear discharge. Congenital cholesteatoma presents as white mass behind an intact tympanic membrane. Primary acquired cholesteatoma. In this, there is no history of previous otitis media or a pre-existing perforation. Theories on its genesis include invagination of pars placida due to persistent negative pressure in the attic, basically due to a defect in the eustachian tube basal cell hyperplasia and squamous metaplasia. Secondary acquired cholesteatoma. In this, there is already a pre-existing perforation in past tensa. It is associated with posterior superior perforation or a large central perforation. Theories on its genesis include migration of squamous epithelium and metaplasia. Expansion of a cholesteatoma. Once a cholesteatoma enters the middle ear cleft, it invades the surrounding structures. First by following the path of least resistance and then by enzymatic bone destruction. An attic cholesteatoma may extend backwards into aditus, antrum and mastoid, downwards into mesotymphanus and medially to surround the incus or head of malleus. Destruction of bone by cholesteatoma. Cholesteatoma has the property to destroy bone. The basis of this is by the production of collagenase, acid phosphatase and proteolytic enzymes secreted by osteoclasts and mononuclear inflammatory exudate. It can cause destruction of ear ossicles, erosion of bony labyrinth, canal of facial nerve, sinus plate or tegment tympani and can lead to severe complications. What are the symptoms of a cholesteatoma? Foul smelling ear discharge, feeling of fullness or pressure in the ear, conductive hearing loss, granulation tissue in the ear canal and middle ear, dizziness, facial muscle weakness in the side of the infected ear. Some of the CNS complications of cholesteatoma include sigmoid sinus thrombosis, epidural abscess and meningitis. How do you diagnose a case of cholesteatoma? History and examination, CT scan, audiometry and MRI scan to diagnose CNS complications. How do you treat a case of cholesteatoma? All cholesteatomas should be excised except when there is some medical contraindications for surgery. The surgery basically involves a mastoidectomy to remove the disease and tympanoplasty to repair the eardrum. Canal wall down tympanomastoidectomy and canal wall up tympanomastoidectomy are the two common surgeries performed for cholesteatoma. Periodic follow-ups are necessary because there is a chance of recurrence. Thank you.